take you on a journey to witness the birth of a great movement in video gaming. A journey through places rich with history, filled with danger, and open for adventure. A journey where a game made by just one person for five years jump-started so many people to start making games. Knowing that this game is still so unheard of in the mainstream gaming world is still such an enormous shame. A game with this much heart behind it really is a rarity that we should embrace. For the two-year celebration of the indie game Searchlight, allow me to tell you the story of not just the godfather of indie games, but simply one of the best games of our time. Ah, yes, yes, I finally get to talk about this one. Cave Story is a 2D action platformer released in Japan as freeware under the name Dokutsu Monogatari, which roughly translated in English means Cave Story. Cave Story is actually a temporary name, but as Pixel went on making the game, he realized that the name really stuck. What's that? What's Cave Story, you might be asking? Who's Pixel, you might be asking? Alright, well let me give you a full disclosure on what this video is intended to do. This is to be the full story behind Cave Story. What I'm going to go over is why this is such an important game in the indie gaming movement, the history and philosophy behind the game's creation, and why it's such a groundbreaking and phenomenal experience. You may want to pause this video right now and grab some popcorn because I have a lot to say and it's going to be a long one. I have no shame. Cave Story, released in 2004, was created by Daisuke Amaya, who also goes by the name Pixel. He did everything in the game, including the programming, designing, creating the music, characters, story, everything, all by himself. There's a specific reason why Cave Story isn't considered just a great game, but one of the most important and influential games of the past generation. And not just for the indie community. Nowadays, it's not entirely unheard of to hear that one or two people have developed and distributed a great, influential game all by themselves. On top of the technology and resources getting a lot cheaper and more accessible to the public, there's now plenty of venues to get the word out about your game. The thing that was so remarkable in 2004 is that it was hard to believe that one person was able to create a completely original, full-fledged, six-hour adventure that could stand next to the likes of a Super Mario or a Metro. It's not to say that an indie gaming scene wasn't there. Small dev teams distributing their games independently certainly happened pre-2004, such as games made for Newgrounds or the Adventure Games Studio. But for the most part, these small teams distributing their games hadn't really caught on with the public eye yet, and some of the technology was still very limited. The downloadable service Steam had only just started a year before Cave Story released, and the Xbox 360 a year later, and the Wii and PS3 longer down the line. You also have to consider that this is a time even before YouTube. I know, hard to think of, right? Facebook only just started as a private service, and Twitter was two years down the line. Outside of a few print magazines and sites just starting out, the social networks were still very limited, so there wasn't as much of a convenient way to get your game recognized for a market that simply hadn't started yet. Cave Story is special because even in this early period of downloadable games, it was one of the first truly excellent full-length downloadable games with its multiple endings, heartfelt story, and retro-style gameplay. More on that later. The biggest reason that Cave Story is such an important game to the indie scene is that in a lot of ways it validated this new emerging market, and perhaps in a small way helped validate the mainstream studios for the same downloadable market. And a lot of small game developers, or if not future game developers, saw Cave Story as an example and went, wow, 
This thing can be made and published all by ourselves, and we can catch the public eye if we play our cards right. And a bit like a domino effect, more and more game developers started putting out their products for the different systems and platforms and started to build more and more of a market. And Cave Story has become such a big and influential game for a lot of indie developers. Team Meat had considered putting the main character from Cave Story into their game as one of their unlockable extra characters. Which according to Team Meat, Pixel simply didn't want to be involved. Definitely a shame. Since Cave Story was one of the first to really validate the market of indie gaming, that's why it's considered the godfather of the medium. You know, considering that was all the way back in 2004, and it's now 2011, it's ironic to think that the indie scene is still very, very young. At the time Pixel began work on the project, he was still studying programming in college and wanted to make a game just for fun. You know, just something to pass the time instead of the usual methods of passing the time that aren't just exclusive to college. I know I'm not one to talk here, but um... NERD! His first intention was to make a game in full-fledged 3D. Unfortunately at the time, the technology wasn't quite there and it was much more doable to create something with a retro look to it. Again, this is 1999 when Resident Evil 3, Donkey Kong 64, and Final Fantasy VIII were released, and the mainstream studios were still in the early stages of 3D. So it would have been hard, if not impossible, to have a great looking 3D game made all by yourself at the time. So instead, he went the retro route. While long into the beta, he decided to show off what he was working on to a friend and dorm mate. No, Oueda. I really hope my Japanese teacher isn't here to see me pronounce these names. Nao gave some pretty harsh criticism at the original beta, telling him that it wasn't fun and going into detail as to what did and didn't work. Pixel then rethought his original designs to better improve upon them. It's a game that took roughly five years to complete, and during this time, he went into a few odd jobs and also raised a family. So I guess he did do a bit of partying in college, and now I feel even more like a nerd. He had other responsibilities in life, leaving Cave Story to only work on at late nights and when he had the free time, which is part of the reason for the long development time. Pixel has stated in a very elaborate interview from Gamma Sutra saying, quote, The total years spent in creating the game was five years, out of which two years was just me creating it, but I scrapped what I had originally created. The rest was spent trying to get the audience to like what I had created. That's why the games I make are something that I want people to enjoy rather than my creating just to create. This unreleased beta had the player use ammo more sparingly until you could unlock unlimited ammunition. It wasn't until Pixel and Now realized that having unlimited ammo was a lot more fun and a lot less restricted. When he released the game in 2004, Pixel wasn't quite sure what to expect from the project or what kind of reception he would receive for it but slowly it started to gain popularity through word of mouth and fan support. Again, more of that later. Ha, <laughs> I'm smashing his head against the block. That's original. So Cave Story stars this little guy up here named Quote. He's a robot who wakes up in this cave with no memory whatsoever. So this little guy wakes up in a cave and drops into Mamiga Village, a small town populated by Japan's secret and sinister plan to weaponize cuteness. The Mamigas are a combination of bunnies and puppies. Bunnies and puppies. And holy god, these guys are incredibly cute and likable. Each of the Mamigas have their own little quirks to them, like the Mr. Smithers of the group, or the leader Sue, or King. A Mamiga with a scar and a sword, who's the tough guy of the game, but I would still totally buy a stuffed animal for a nephew or daughter of this character, cause it's so cute! After you drop into the Mamiga village, not so subtly by the way, you discover the plot that the villagers are being enslaved by an evil doctor, who's just called the doctor, and the Mamigas are trying to form an alliance to try and fight against him, and not doing very well at that I might add. So our buddy Quote teams up with the Mamigas and other quirky characters in the cave to stop the slavery, learn more about himself and the history that the cave holds, and show this prehistoric doctor how they do things downtown. The game is a combination of exploration and action. It's a standard platformer where you have to jump around the world and fight enemies with a variety of different weapons like a pistol, missile launcher, swords, and a few hidden weapons like the machine gun and the... Uh, Bubble launcher gun? Bubbles? Well, alright, let's bubble our way out of here! 
When Pixel decided to make a 2D game, he mentions that his intentions were to create a retro-style game that lifts up and gives nods to games from the NES, or in his case the Famicom, while still standing up to a lot of those classic games. Cave Story works as a kind of mixtape of all those classics, such as using the weapons and shooting style of Blaster Master and finding hidden health and missile stock upgrades like in Metroid. Sound familiar? These different weapons range in usefulness and can be helpful in certain situations like the sword being able to spread across a swarm of enemies and the missile having a little bit more of a punch to it and the fireball gun is really good against ground-based enemies for some tricky situations to get through later in the game. Hmm, your arsenal of weapons has different uses later in the game. But one design choice with these weapons that sets Cave Story apart and makes it a very compelling experience is its upgrading system. For each of its weapons, it starts out at level 1, and you can slowly upgrade your equipment by blasting the enemies which leave behind sparkling triangles. A possible link towards another Nintendo game? Hmm? Ah, uh, I have no shame. If you gain enough of these triangles, your weapon levels up and has more power to it. However, if you get hit by an enemy, not only do you lose a little bit of health, but you also lose power to your weapon and have to collect more triangles to power back up. Although Pixel intentionally made the level design work so you can sneak by enemies no problem, it's a cool risk and reward system that encourages you to dive right into the action and rewards the player for taking on the enemies with your upgraded machine gun that you earned to hear the sweet sound of the baddies being mowed down in your sweet victory. <laughs> Also, a little side note about that machine gun that you probably just upgraded. You can shoot it directly below you and you can hover for a few seconds. Along with a nice sense of freedom of just gliding along the level, it's definitely useful to get through some of the trickier platforms and enemies. To progress the story, you'll mostly be going through linear paths to try and get an item, look for amigas, rescue friends, or stop some enemies. While most of the game is about navigating these corridors and avoiding the enemies and obstacles, it's often broken up with many different boss battles. And I do mean many. You seem to run into boss every 10 or 20 minutes in this game. And the bosses are sometimes reoccurring, like Balrog, a persistent henchman whose character design was inspired by a bar of soap. So technically you could blast away at the soap with your bubble gun to help out the bunny puppy hybrids against the evil doctor with a powerful crown inside the large cave. Oh, video gaming. There are also a few other boss battles in this game that have some very elaborate planning behind them like the giant frog or battling the huge tank. The boss battles help break up the shooting and add a lot of variety and work great for the pacing. Just the right amount where you're into shooting and going through the corridors, and it's a boss battle, then the shooting feels a lot more fresh again. These boss battles range in difficulty, obviously fitting with the game's well-balanced difficulty curve. Again, some of the weapons work better than others for different baddies, but not at the point where they have to look it up on game facts for hidden weapons to figure out how to beat them. So while Cave Story is a mostly linear game, that's not to say that it doesn't have its hidden secrets and goodies. Cave Story itself has three different endings to it. A bad ending, a good ending, and a best ending. In order to get the best ending, there are parts where you have to ignore certain people, find some hidden items, and make sure that one key person in the story stays alive. This also means you'll have to go through the Hell level, and trust me, this thing is very appropriately named the Hell level. As of right now, I haven't had a chance to beat this incredibly hard test of your ability to play Cave Story. Deciding to take this hidden path opens up new things in the story regarding the main characters. But you definitely shouldn't feel like you have to take this main path. If you take the regular good ending, it's still a satisfying conclusion to the story. And you can always decide to skip the hell level and just go after the regular good ending. It isn't terribly cryptid to figure out, but again, if you're stuck, there's always the internet. And there's no shame in that. Right? I'm no less of a man because of it. R right? Alright, now that I've talked your ear off about the design choices, let's talk about the real heart of the game right there in the title. The story. Throughout the game, you run into a variety of characters with funny traits and lines like Curly Brace, a quirky rogue robot who wants to protect the Mimigas, and I do indeed mean quirky in every sense of the word, Misery, the doctor's sidekick who never really seems to want to fight you. Yeah, you better run before I bubble you to death! A group of scientists who've been betrayed by the doctor and the various Mimigas, which I mentioned earlier. 
The overall theme of the game, as you might be able to tell, is animal cruelty. The game takes a highly sympathetic look at how humankind abuses the world and the people around them for power, but how Cave Story works with this theme really feels fresh and hits home. The tone does have its lighthearted moments and makes you really care about who the characters are and what's happening. Pixel obviously spent a lot of time giving the world and its characters a detailed backstory. As you go on, you'll slowly understand what's going on when you're thrown into the middle of this war. And I do mean war. One thing that really struck me the first time I played the game is while there are lighthearted moments is how dark and brutal the story can get. When our hero isn't just battling random enemies through corridors, he's forced to go through battles he's not going to want to fight. The game does not screw around. There are consequences that happen in this game that are such rarities for the retro scene except for perhaps the Final Fantasy series. And yes, that is a bit of a hint as to what happens. Some of the actions that you have to do in this game are devastatingly heartbreaking. What makes the story really stand out amongst the crowd, and especially as a retro game, is while it does have a standard defeat the bad guy scenario, what the bad guy does to your friends and the world as a whole makes the villain even more villainous, and makes saving the world all that more rewarding. It means a lot more to beat the bad guy at the end of your journey. And it's also interesting to see how the different characters react to such a villain, especially Misery, which I won't give away here. The story is one of the strongest parts of the game, and it wraps itself very nicely and has a great sense of closure, focus, and pacing. It's as heartwarming as it is heartbreaking, funny as it is sad. It's one of those rare stories that balances comedy and tragedy and still remains a great adventure. On top of that, the fact that you're doing a lot of the actions in the game instead of it just being a cutscene makes it all the more strong as a video game story. There's a reason why story is in the title, folks, and that's because the story here is really, really strong. You see, the Doctor in the game isn't just rounding up the Mamigas for slavery and his personal use. What happens to the Mamigas in the game... Um... Alright, now we gotta get into the spoiler section of the video. Now, I understand that this video is going to be watched by people who already know Cave Story and some who never heard of Cave Story before. So what I'm going to do, and borrow our tagline from a different reviewer, is that I'm going to put this image right down here. Whenever you see this image, that's when the spoilers are going to be on, and I'll put them away when all the spoilers are done. And for those of you wondering, yes, that is indeed Terry Kavanaugh sporting 3D glasses. Stylin'! So, how the Doctor plans to use the Mamigas is to make them eat what's called red flowers. You hear about these red flowers early in the game, hearing that it could possibly kill the Mamigas once they eat it. But what actually happens to the Mamigas when they do eat it is a lot worse. The red flowers turn them into giant, crazed monsters with red eyes and no more brain. It's kind of like they turn into mad dogs with only one thing on their mind, to kill anything in their path. One of the Mamigas who's captured early on in the game later reappears when the Doctor and Misery force this one Mamiga to eat one of the red flowers. And now it's just you or her. One person's walking away from this alive, and if you don't kill this Mamiga, then you can't go on with your journey and help out the rest of the cave. And when you defeat them, they don't come back. You just killed the bunny-puppy hybrid. What makes the scene even more heartbreaking is that after you eventually do defeat her, we get to see Tokoro untransform and go back to normal for one short moment, then they're gone. And the game doesn't pander or really draw attention to this moment. They're just dead, and it leaves the player to realize that, well, the stakes in this game are quite real, and your actions have some very serious consequences. To me, this was the moment in Cave Story that made it rise from a great platformer to a grand platformer. The stakes and consequences that the player can make on this world are even more apparent when you get the bad ending. Here you have a chance to escape the island and fly away with nothing resolved. But a great thing about the ending is that after you do go through the bad ending, you could go back to the last checkpoint and go through the ending again, but this time you could go up the wall that's right next to where you can exit. I mean, the situation is a perfect metaphor. He has the chance to dart away at any possible moment, and towering above him is a much harder task to save the world. 
he's literally climbing up from his escape. It's moments like these that make Cave Story stand right up there with any Final Fantasy or Silent Hill story any day. And that's it for the spoilers! Everyone back! So while this game accomplishes a lot of great things, it also does have one small flaw. The game relies on its use of save points. One thing that happened once or twice is that I go up to a save point and save, then go through a pretty tough corridor and get my butt handed to me. Then I have to go all the way back to the save point and do the level over again. You can only continue from these save points if you die, and at times it felt like an artificial way to lengthen gameplay. Now true, this is a common thing amongst retro games like the Mega Man franchise, but sometimes during these save points, especially one section in the Egg Corridor, it comes too few and far between and can definitely be frustrating sometimes. So when you're playing, make sure you go to these save points often in this game. Unless you want to go through the entire game over and over again like a bonus mode and I want to be the guy. This going back to the save point design choice isn't a deal breaker in the game, but it's the only thing holding it back. So the design of the game and the story are both well executed, but how's the presentation? The first time I played through the game, I wasn't quite as impressed as maybe I was supposed to be. My first impression is that the backgrounds were a bit generic. They always loop in a pattern, and it always seems to be that one same texture for a lot of them. However, it was actually deliberately designed that way. Pixel has said that he made the backgrounds look like that, so he'll be able to show off the main characters and they would stand out more in the world. Which is appropriate, because the characters show a great amount of charm, detail, personality, and especially imagination to them. Aw, look at the cute tombstones. And this is one of those games where you can really sit down and notice the nice little touches that he added with the graphics. Like after you hit the top of the ceiling, you see little bits of yourself fall off from the top. And a lot of the animations and characters have those nice little touches that really make it stand out and really shows he paid close attention to detail. But one of the big key parts that makes Cave Story such a joy to experience is that truly amazing soundtrack. Also keen on the retro experience, each song carries strong melodies and have a different range of tone and style. You got some nice hanging out music for inside the buildings. Hard boiled boss battle music. Adventurous Exploration Tracks. To create the specific sounds that he wanted for the game, Pixel created his own software from scratch called Pixtone Collage. To get minorly technical and super nerdy, this software can add pre-rendered voices and sound effects to accentuate the music and create chiptune waveforms and translate them into standard Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. And totally not being a music dork at all, I have no idea what I just said. For each of the songs, it took him about three days to think of a track, again all by himself showing a great range for the entire game. Don't be surprised later on if you find yourself downloading the soundtrack for your iTunes or finding a clever remix. And trust me, there's plenty of good findings. One from the band Rare Candy, another from Verney and Process, and even a full-length remix project spanning three discs with original cover art. Fairly recently, there's even a metal version dump of the soundtrack. It sounds amazing, definitely seek it out. You can also find some really lovely piano medleys of the game done by both Wedge of Cheese and German Sea Bass. Some of these medleys and remixes are being heard in this video. Like I've said before, this game was released in 2004 as freeware, so for the original version, you can find this version of the game from the single best source for all things Cave Story called What Else? CaveStory.org. This is a place where fans can share their fan art, cosplay, strategy guides, discuss on forums, everything. 
The website has the original game with a large range of different language patches and ports. Just to name a few, you can play this game on the PC, the Mac, the PSP, Linux, the Xbox, and even a graphing calculator. I don't know how they made that possible, but if you want to go through Cave Story while going through a boring lecture in math class, well, you can do it now. Not that I condone such acts. <clears throat> There's also a healthy range of different language patches for this port. It's a real testament to the universal nature of the game, to how it's been translated in so many different ways. The English translation comes from Aeon Genesis, the same organization that translated Clock Tower, La Luana, and Star Fox 2, among other games, the Cave Story patch being the most popular. Oh, and by the way, it is freeware, so definitely no guilt when downloading this game. Without these dedicated fans making all these patches and spreading the word about the game, chances are nobody would have even heard about the game, and possibly there wouldn't even be a Bit Trip, Super Meat Boy, or a Minecraft to a certain degree. Pixel owes a lot to these dedicated fans who made the game so accessible outside of Japan. But the game really isn't just freeware anymore, which brings us to a topic which I actually haven't had a chance to talk about in this show. The Nintendo Wii. In early 2008, Pixel was approached by Nicalis producer Tyrone Rodriguez to produce a shiny new WiiWare version of the game. Nicalis is the same company responsible for the upcoming port of La Mulana and are also known for Night Sky, a silhouette chill platformer that's for another day. The philosophy that the company had with the port of Cave Story was to have the game be as faithful to the original as possible with a few improvements and a more detailed art style. To get a little bit technical, uh, the original Cave Story was designed with a resolution of uh, 320 by 240. Uh, what you may or may not know is that the Wii supports uh, 640 by approximately 480. And what that has allowed us is to take the original character from Cave Story and add a significant amount of detail. The main character now, for instance, compared to the original artwork, he now has hair, he has a green scarf. You can really make out the details on the character. Uh, it just brings the game a whole new dimension of life. This new style is very minimal to the original sprites while staying true to it. Pixel got to oversee all the new changes and touches to the game and improve on all the little things they added. But what's really great about the Cave Story WiiWare version is that it has a feature that allows you to change the graphics and music from the original to the new features. So if you want to go old music and new graphics, or vice versa, you can do that. The port also comes with a variety of extra modes and challenges that are unlocked after you beat the Hell level. It was kind of disappointing to find out that you had to unlock the Hell level in order to get it, but there's some nice little extras to have if you beat it. Full disclosure here, I played the entire game for this review on the Wii, and the first run through was done with the Wii mode. I wouldn't recommend it because the C button on the back can be awkward to scroll through the different weapons. Then I tried the GameCube controller, and oh yes, does this work so great with this game. The joystick, grip, everything works a lot better, and it's easier to scroll back and forth between your different weapons. The classic controller is supposed to work well from what I heard on the internet, take that what you will. It's currently available for the WiiWare for 1200 Wii points, or 12 US dollars, and is absolutely worth the download. So with the version now released on the WiiWare and received moderately successful, Nicalis kind of went a little port crazy with the same version. There's also a DSi version of the game that includes a map screen on the bottom and a jukebox. And the game is also available for the Mac App Store under the name Cave Story Plus. Both ports contain the same game as the WiiWare version with the same features, but the Mac version has an added level called Wind Fortress. Both of these versions are available for a bit cheaper than the WiiWare version for 10 US dollars each. I would ask why this game was ported to the Mac first, a much, much less popular gaming platform while they're still working on the Steam version for the PC, but at the same time... We finally get an exclusive for the Mac and the PC people are gonna have to wait! Oh look at that! Look at that! Cave Story Plus! Available on Mac only through the App Store and you PC guys gonna have to wait, huh? What you gonna do? You have to wait now! It's your turn, huh? What you gonna- uh... So as I was editing this video, the Steam version recently got released. 
But speaking of exclusive, in the midst of some other random video game that I'm sure nobody's ever heard of or is even talking about at this time, Nicalis teamed up with NIS America to bring us a full 2.5D port of the game, having all the features of the WiiWare port and a brand new art style. The reviews have been pretty kind towards this port so far, but unfortunately, me without a Nintendo 3DS, I can't really say anything about it. But to sum this all up in a much shorter way, the freeware version is still available at cavestory.org with its many ports, but I would highly recommend either the WiiWare version or the Steam version of the game. The GameCube controller feels amazing, and when you get the new features, play modes, and challenges, you also help support Pixel, which is always a plus. The good news with the Steam version is that it's on sale right now for its grand debut on the PC. And with Steam Play, it's Mac compatible. That, and there aren't many cheap ways in order to play a gamepad through a Mac, this is coming from experience, so either or, it's up to you. If anybody watching this video has an affection not just for indie gaming, but video gaming in general, you really owe it to yourself to sit down and play this amazing game. This game helped pave the way for some of the best experiences that we've had in recent years, where any developer from anywhere, from any background, can create a game and have it be celebrated around the world. And instead of just being an influential game, it's something with real heart to it, with real passion, with real drive. As much as this game does remind me of days of my youth and the retro days of old, it also reminds me that the days of new are still going to have moments like this and I'm still going to have passion for this medium that I loved as a child and will love as an adult, and I hope I will keep loving throughout the years to come. This game isn't just a project or adding a number to whatever franchise that this company is going for, it's just somebody in his garage doing it out of love. You know, it's funny how things can work out sometimes. One guy just makes a game for about five years in his room just to pass the time, and because of that, the future of my hobby has never, ever looked bright. Thank you for now two years of the Indie Game Searchlight, and I hope you enjoyed watching. Huzzah!